What's going on, my friends? Hope you're having an amazing start to your week. As always, you can follow me on Instagram at DreamRare. That's at DreamRare, D-E-R-E-A-M-R-A-R-E. You can follow me on Twitter at Legendary Energy. You can check out my website at legendary.vision for all of my links. And of course, stay tuned on Facebook for more live streams, news analysis, music, and poetry. I'm going to wait about five or ten more seconds for people to get into the live stream. And I did a little one last night. I figured I'd take it down and wait until the charges came out and spend a few hours trying to really research what's going on because I want to be as unbiased and fair as possible about these uh, Manafort indictments from Mueller. And I've looked for a few hours. I've read all the articles from both sides. Mostly I've read what I like to do. People always ask me, how do you even do news analysis, blah, blah, blah. What are you doing? Do you make stuff up? I like to read the hit pieces. I like to read the MSNBCs, the Washington Post, the CNNs. I read those because even in those articles, I'm going to debunk basically the entire thing now using a CNBC article. I'm not using a right-wing article. And just to make it clear before I start, because I know this is the number one attack. I see it all over Google and, and the news searches. They're saying Republicans are going to convince you that this is a terrible idea. I've never voted Republican in my life. I've never even registered or thought about voting Republican. I've only registered Democrat. My whole life I've been a left-leaning activist of sorts, social justice, environment. That's where my heart and my soul really is. So nothing about me is right-leaning or, or conservative. But I go where the truth is. I go where the facts are. I go where the common sense is. And this charge makes no sense. And I don't need to use a right-leaning article to debunk it. I'm going to use the articles they push out because once you get past the headline, the sense completely tumbles apart what they're doing. As I've said for months, and I've taken a little bit of heat for it, not really much, but they're using people's hate and fear towards President Trump to manipulate people via their emotions to push forward this ridiculous agenda that has no truth, that has no law, that has no facts. So I don't care before I start. I don't care if you love Trump and think he's the godsend greatest president ever. If that's the case, great. You know, good energy there. If you think Trump is the worst person ever and you think he's here to destroy America and the world, great. I'm not here to convince you whether he's the greatest thing or the worst thing in the world. What I am hoping that you have to do if you want to get to the truth, unless you just want to scream emotions and lose and lie about everything, you have to be able to separate your hate for somebody, your love for somebody, and the evidence and the facts and the reality and the common sense around it. Because if you just use your hate for the president to just be like, oh my God, I believe everything against him. I believe every CNN or MSNBC article and everything that they say because I hate Trump. You're going to continue to get lied to. You're going to continue to get used and manipulated because it's happening on election and there's no better case than this uh, Manafort indictment. I'm going to read the headline. This is from C CNBC. I'm going to debunk the whole thing using not a hit piece, not or not a uh, not a right wing, a extremely left wing article where they're bragging about it. But when you read what they're talking about, it makes no sense. All right, Manafort indictment could play out badly for Trump administration. So here's the first point that I've seen 10,000 times and since I would say 2016, that's when I started to come around. I'm like, wait, these people are just lying using words. Manafort indictment could play out badly for Trump administration. It's not Manafort indictment is terrible for Trump and we're sure of it. It's could. They've used these words nonstop over and over again. It could be. It might possibly be. We might be onto something as long as we could manipulate you via your emotions and lead you to next week episode where, oh, we're going to get Trump next week. We're going to get him next week. They're playing you for ratings. They're playing you for clicks. Oh, it could play out badly. What kind of headline is that? Clearly, you don't know if it will or not. Okay, then it says, Special Counsel Robert Mueller just sent a searing missile across the bow of Trump administration in the form of an indictment of Paul Manafort, Trump's former campaign manager. A searing missile across the bow of Trump's administration. First of all, the headline says it could play out badly for him. They're not even sure. And the second one is a searing missile right across the bow. It's like... These people are so desperate to just <laughs> be right that they, they don't even know how to be. All right. So now to the meat of the investigation, uh, the, the indictment. 
So I find out after researching for hours, I was like, man, this must be really big. And I expected them to get something because let's be honest, I mean, when you have a bunch of businesses all across the world and you're a billionaire or multimillionaire, you're doing lobbying, it's really grimy, uh, dirty work that not just the politicians are doing, pretty much all the big businessmen are doing. So the fact that they found nothing during the Trump campaign was alarming because I find out, I read, and it says they're indicting him based on things that have happened years ago, before he was even Trump's campaign manager. So they couldn't even find anything worthy of indictment while he was Trump's campaign manager only years before. And here's the kicker. They're not going to say this in the, in the CNBC article, but you just put one and one together. Robert Mueller was an FBI director during the Obama administration. So he had all of this information. This is not new information. It's been done for years ago. It wasn't during 2016 or 2017. It's not new information. So he's basically admitting that he didn't prosecute or go on it when it actually happened because it's not like someone else was in charge he was an fbi director so they're just reaching back years to something that if it was truly a crime they're admitting that they didn't do their job years ago so it, it doesn't even involve trump's campaign in this article it even states it has nothing to do with trump's uh Trump's campaign or administration. And here's, here's a few more lines from the CNBC article. They, they have this huge headline to searing missiles. So if you're very anti-Trump, you're like, yes, we're winning. We're going we're gonna to take them down. They get you with these words. But then you get to the meat of the article and they're like, we're not even sure we can do anything because they never could do anything because this whole thing is basically a witch hunt to delegitimize the presidency, even if you hate Donald Trump. Even if you think he's the worst thing in the world, nothing about this makes any sense and Robert Mueller I just shared a big Newsweek article he was the FBI director who potentially looked the other way as Obama Hillary Clinton and the Podesta brothers sold 130 million dollars worth of uranium cakes to Russia and there's even reports that Mueller himself gave it to Russian uh, officials on a, a airport tarmac I mean this you can't make this stuff up how is this guy with conflicting interests going to be the head of it. So here's where I want to get to. Okay. There's, there's a very telling part in here. I just got to find it. It talks about basically, I'm going to read it word for word when I get to it, but it basically says that even if they find something, even if they were to indict him, that it's not even a crime to begin with. And it comes straight from NBC. So I don't want to paraphrase it. I'm going to find it. Hold on. I got my computer right here. Just give me one second. Sorry about the wait. Um, hold on one second. I, I really want to find word for word because I, I want people, a lot of people say, Anomaly, where do you get this stuff? I don't even read. I, I don't read Breitbart ever. Some people accuse me, oh, you're right. I don't even read Breitbart. I, I, I've maybe looked at two articles in the past two years to counter-reference. I read the articles that they actually put out. And this one says right in it that they can't do anything about it. Hold on. Next, the indictments. This gives... I can't find it. I apologize for the wait, but if you read that article, the CNBC, it says Manafort indictment proves that Mueller's playing hardball commentary. In the actual article, it says this doesn't include Trump. And then it even goes as far as to say, even if they find something, it doesn't mean that they're going to find Russian collusion. Oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. I found it. I'm sorry about the, the delay. It says... He can use full resources of the federal government and FBI to investigate just about anything he wants to. This will likely include business matters well beyond the campaigns such as Trump's taxes, business deals, and activities of Trump's family and friends. Mueller's work may never reach the concept of Russian collusion, which, by the way, is not a federal crime if he can find criminal violations apart from the campaign itself. This is straight out of the CNBC article. I'm going to repeat that again. They're admitting that this whole witch hunt, they have enough crimes. They literally have a former secretary of state who used her, her foundation and her lobbyist friends in the Podesta brothers 
to sell 20% of the United States uranium and get money through back channels to herself to enrich herself personally, which is a major crime and a collusion, they cover this stuff up. They act like it doesn't exist. And in this article, this is not a Breitbart or a right-wing article. This is a CNBC article. They say, this will... Uh, Mueller's work may never reach the concept of Russian collusion, so we're just wasting tens of millions of dollars and we might even find it, which, by the way, is not a federal crime. How in the world, even if you hate Trump with all of your heart and your soul and your might and you think he is the worst thing to ever exist, how does it make sense when you know if you're the left, a far left-leaning activist or you're a far right-leaning activist, you know how much crime and corruption the United States is responsible for when it comes to wars, when it comes to the funding of you know, jihadists in other countries and working with countries who are actively funding, funding terrorist groups to take over regions in Syria and Iraq. There's money laundering. There's you know, all sorts of the, the biggest crimes in the world that never go solved, that never get uh, brought to, to light. Yet they've put together an entire special counsel where the head of it is involved in the biggest U.S.-Russia collusion scandal in the last 10 years. He's somehow the judge. The biggest culprit potentially is the judge of a, a phony investigation where even CNBC, the home of the Trump haters, admit he may likely never find anything that shows U.S. and Trump collusions. And even if they did, that it's actually not even a federal crime. So at best... At best, which is likely not going to happen, the, the collusion, whether you love or hate the guy in office, comes from a lot of other people. Even if they found what they're looking for, it's not a federal crime. How, even if you think he's the worst person in the world, how does that make sense? I just don't understand. This is why you have a lot of left-leaning activists such as H.A. Goodman, Zach Haller, other people who were all getting heat, but it's like... It doesn't matter what side you support, left, right. The truth is the truth. If, if you're not doing it because of the truth, if you're not doing it to push common sense and love and unity and, you know, fair analysis, then what are, you, what are we doing it for? Whether you're left or right. Is this just a group think where, you know, you get together with like-minded people and feel better than other people based on your political beliefs? Why are we doing this? We're doing it to get to the truth. We're doing it. Most people are doing it because they truly believe that we're right. So how much longer... Can the anti-Trump crowd just believe anything? Believe anything. Okay, there's multiple politicians that I don't like. And one of them was President Donald Trump. Before he was elected, I didn't vote for him. And I was a little nervous when he won. Like, what the heck? Are you serious? But it doesn't cloud my vision from reality. And what I found out by not clouding my vision from reality and watching everything unfold over the past year, I found out. The reason that President Trump won, besides the fact that a lot of people liked his lack of political correctness and besides the fact that CNBC and CNN and MSNBC, all they do is nonstop talk about him and they basically gave him the win and now they're doubling down on it, like still screaming about him, even though that's exactly what got him elected in the first place. He won. And this is, this is my pitch to people who really dislike him. Because the people who like him, you already know the reasons you like him and, and the reasons why the government's corrupt. But to people who don't like Trump, this is the reason why he won. In my opinion, it's not that the bar, he set the bar up here, like he's the Usain Bolt, the Michael Jordan of politics, and there can't be anybody better, and no one can ever be better than him. It's that the bar, the people think the bar was set here and Trump's down here. That's, that's the story the, the, the media paints. Oh my God, what, politics was up here. America was perfect. There were no wars. There was no corruption. There was no crime. There was nothing. And then President Trump came down here and stole the election. And everyone's like, oh my God, democracy doesn't exist. It dies in darkness. Even though Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, who has a $600 million contract with... Never mind, let's not get into that. Uh, so the bar was not here and Trump was not here. The bar was so low, the bar they set was so low that Trump came in here and by default he was better than every single politician basically ever besides maybe, you know, Rand Paul and, and elements of Tulsi Gabbard. Besides that, I can't even think of three politicians that I think are better. It's not because the bar was here and Trump is like, oh, the big bad crazy guy. That's how low they are. They're so low. 
that Trump comes through just spewing anything out, doesn't give a, a SHIT, doesn't care about political correctness, doesn't hide things, and he's just better than them. That's why I say if you want to get him out of office, be better. It's like the people who basically let Trump win are doubling down on their stupidity. They're like, oh, we're going to make a nine-month special counsel. That's how we're going to get back at Trump. We're going to make a big special counsel filled with an ex-FBI director who turned the other way while we sold all the uranium to Russia. And maybe, just maybe, after two years of just spewing out hate and division and fake news to, to, to our people, maybe after a year, even if we find something, which we're not going to find anything, Maybe then nothing will happen because it's not even a crime to begin with. Nothing about anything they're doing makes sense. There is, I mean, there's never been a law. Let's be honest. There's no rule of law for the elites. There's no rule of law for the oligarchs. If you have enough money, it's not a crime. That's how the United States is run. I ran, I mean, this is disgusting. I don't even like to bring it up, but I read an article years ago. I'm not even going to speak about what or who. You can look it up for yourself, but it was like a multi-millionaire billionaire who raped like a two-year-old, disgusting, terrible, creepy, awful stuff, but he didn't even see a single day in prison because he had multi-millions of dollars. The rule of law doesn't work for people. If you're poor, you go to jail. If you're mid-level, you go to jail. If you're wealthy, you can do anything and never go to jail. A lot of what Trump ran on, whether you love him or hate him, whether you think he could pull it off or not, by the way, side note, Jeff Sessions, what, what have you been doing crying about marijuana and doing nothing? It would be nice President Trump gave you a chance to do something for the American people and hold some people accountable. But President Trump kind of ran on, and in essence, I, who knows if he could pull it off or not. He ran on, hey, let's hold people accountable. Let's actually hold people accountable. And these people that don't want to get held accountable, they're raising the circus. They're creating the circus. It's not because they think Trump is a, a bad guy and they want to get him out there. That's what the average person thinks. Man, Trump is a really terrible guy and everything was great before that and they're trying to save us. No, it's the criminals. It's the terrible people in the mainstream media, in the media system, in politics, you know, in criminal justice reform. They're shaking in their boots because for the first time since maybe JFK, the guy that they didn't want to win actually won. So JFK was doing all these things and he didn't last very long. Uh, you know, since then it's like, hey, you want Obama, you want Mitt Romney, you want, you know, you want McCain, you want this guy, you want Hillary, you want... They didn't expect President Trump to become President Trump. They thought he was just going to be big, bad, crazy Donald, but he won. That's why they're freaking out because Trump is not tied to the pharmacy lobbyists. He's not tied to the military industrial complex. Do I think he could solve everything in the world? Am I, am I holding him to these standards? Like, oh, if, if Trump doesn't end the wars in a year, then it's all his fault. No, but he has the best chance. He's our best shot at all of these stuff. So he comes in on, hey, if I get elected, I will lock you up. I will put you in prison for your crimes. That's why this Mueller Manafort stuff exists. They're even bragging in this article, this CNBC article. They're saying, the reason he did this is now he can't get fired. There's no way they could fire him. Why? They're lying to their fan base to be outraged if he gets fired. This whole indictment was a protection because they know it's collapsing. They know the real Russian collusion is on the side with the Podesta brothers, with Hillary Clinton, with Barack Obama, and with Mueller involved as FBI director. They took 20% of the United States uranium. Seven or eight people signed off on it. Hillary Clinton got $130 million to her Clinton Foundation. Bill Clinton went to Kremlin linked banks and did $500,000 speeches. And next thing you know, 20% of the US's uranium is in Russian control. This was not Donald Trump. This was not Manafort. This was Hillary, Obama's administration, whoever signed off on it, Mueller at FBI director, and the Podesta brothers putting the deal together. So they have to do some sort of distraction because once reality sets in for the Trump haters, they'll realize like, hey, you know, Trump is pretty bad. I, I don't agree with his policies. I, I think he's wrong and I think he's a little bit too out there and blunt, but wow, there's some other criminals out there besides Donald Trump and I didn't even realize. That's what they're afraid of. So they continue to just boil up this nonsensical Russia collusion thing because it has no base to it and it's never had a base to it. I could go from October of 2016 
when I didn't even support President Trump, when I didn't even consider myself somebody that wanted him to be there, I saw what they were doing with Russia. And I saw every single fake story collapse, 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 collapse all year. And I knew, even as a left-leaning activist, that the establishment didn't want Trump to be there, and they were making this up to hide their own corruption and try to regain control of power. If you're truly against fascism and the establishment, the real fascism is coming from Facebook and Google and Twitter and the Russia Council and all the other politicians who can't fathom that this is somewhat of a free country. I mean, everyone knows it's not a republic. It's certainly not a democracy anymore. It's like a disheveled oligarchy at best. And they're blown away that they couldn't even do it right. They had all the, the control and they still lost to President Trump. So any iota of freedom and democracy that we still have lies in the fact that we have a, a president that's elected that's not tied down to a lot of these lobbyists. He's wealthy enough and arrogant enough to sidestep all of this nonsense. And that's all we have. So if we allow our, our semi, not even democracy to get just extorted from us and thrown back into the hands of the, the same families who've had control for 50 and 60 years. How is that anti-fascism? How is that freedom? How is that, you know, uh, any sort of liberal mentality? It's not. They're using liberalism. They're using feminism. They're using the LGBT community. They're using racial stuff to divide us. And this Russia stuff is pure malarkey. They said Russia hacked the uh, power grid in Vermont, the Washington Post put out a big story. After two weeks and millions of shares, it never even happened. It was a completely fake story. They said that Breitbart and Alex Jones were working with Russia and the FBI investigated them. Uh, regardless of if you love or hate Breitbart and Alex Jones, there's one thing for sure. They're Americans, okay? They're classic Americans. They're not Russians. Why, are, why is everything Russian? They're painting this narrative. To make people believe that anything outside of what they say is Russian, it's the McCarthyism Russia scare that happened in the whatever 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s. It's just on a different political side. It's the same sort of McCarthyism. Blame everything on Russia. Everything, it's ridiculous. And then they went and said Donald Trump went with this was their bombshell story two months ago. Don't you notice, even if you hate Trump, even if you think that he's the worst thing in the world. Don't you notice that they're completely full of SHIT when it comes to this Russia stuff? Talk about, you know, your immigration policy. Talk about your tax reform. Talk, talk about your health care plan. But at least have some sort of common sense to be able to decipher, hey, I disagree with Trump here, 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 and here. But hey, this Russia stuff is just pretty ridiculous. It's like they're, they're using these dumb, dumb celebrities like Alyssa Milano. She's like, I'm going to protest in the streets because I live in a you know, Hollywood elite echo chamber where all my friends are apparently uh, sexual predators and pedophiles and I didn't say anything for 20 years. Why don't you focus on yourself? Because Kevin Spacey recently came out or, or Anthony Rapp or whatever his name was came out and was like, hey, Kevin Spacey molested me when I was 14. And then Kevin Spacey's like, oh, I'm gay. And everyone's like, oh, congratulations for coming out, man. Uh, no, he was 14 years old. It's creepy stuff. I mean, and these are these are the celebrities that are telling us how to believe politically. Like, I'm going to riot in the streets. How about you go to your friend's mansion and riot there? Because apparently they're all sexually molesting everybody. Underage. It's creepy, disgusting stuff. Don't riot in the streets because Mueller got fired, because he deserves to get fired, because the whole investigation makes no sense. And even NBC is admitting Mueller's work may never reach the concept of Russian collusion. It's never going to reach it because it's a made-up story. It's a made-up plot. It's fake news, literally, to play with your emotions so you keep tuning in to CNN or MSNBC. They, they're doubling down. They don't know where to go because they've been lying forever. They lost the election. What are they going to do now? Tell you? Oh. Actually, we've been lying for a long time. We've been lying for five or ten years and... You know, I mean, President Trump, he might not be the best uh, guy, but it's like he's not as bad as we said he's. They can't do that because they've, they're so far down the rabbit hole of fake news that they have to do these big headlines. Searing, the searing missile of fake news has penetrated the Trump administration and is going to destroy democracy as we know it. And then in the actual article, they're like, uh, Mueller's work may never reach the concept of Russian collusion, 
which by the way is not even a federal crime to begin with so basically this whole thing is just a complete distraction from all the real crime and corruption in the world and we're just hoping that you're dumb enough and emotional enough to keep following our stories and tune into Rachel Maddow and Wolf Blitzer every week and just be like hmm is Trump gonna get arrested this week is Trump gonna get arrested this week is Trump gonna get and then this way you're never paying attention to reality this is their strategy it's so bizarre Bananas. It has not, it's not a partisan issue. It has nothing to do with left or right. These things are distraction. That's why I don't even consider myself anything. Some people call me, oh, Anomaly, you're a hippie. You're a, you know, you're this. Uh, okay, that's fine. You can call me that, but I don't agree with that. Some people, oh, you're so far down the right wing now, Anomaly. You're a right wing. Sh what? How am I a right wing shill? I, I've never voted Republican in my life. I just think conservatives are right about a lot of things. Just like I think liberals and progressives are right about a lot of things. I just don't agree with how they're doing it. I'm moving forward with progressive policies, helping the environment, collaborating with companies that are planting trees and bringing gardens to elementary schools. These are the things I'm doing. So one could say that I'm actually more left-leaning and progressive than my left-leaning critics because I'm actually doing things about it. And then when it comes to the right, a lot of these common sense things, the constitution, the freedom of speech, I mean, I 100% agree, and all the things they've been complaining about for years, they're right about. I mean, Google, Twitter, Facebook, and the politicians are ridiculously out of control. And I don't care if Trump won, I don't care if a Democrat won, I wouldn't allow this to happen because the truth is the truth. I don't care about labels, I don't care about sides. That's purely a distraction. That's how they get you. So you read an article and it says, Republicans are going to convince you that the Mueller thing is not real and anybody like Anomaly or H.A. Goodman or any, you know, left-leaning activist who tells you must be a Republican in disguise or they must be a Russian because there's not... That's how they get you. They don't want you to listen and have a conversation because if you listen and have a conversation, you might just realize that every single thing that they've said over the past year has been a bunch of fluff. And I'll... Go even further, because it's not that hard. There's 50 stories. It's like putting your hands closed, picking a basket, and picking out which fake story they pushed out. Then they went and said Donald Trump Jr. had a meeting with Russian officials, with a Russian pop star's publicist. Turns out he had a five or ten minute meeting where nothing happened, and the exact thing that they accused him of, they did themselves paying millions of dollars for a dossier, a fake thing that they made up, shared on BuzzFeed, shared on CNN, they're paying the opposition. They were paying British intelligence spies and, and trying to get Russian stories. So everything that they're accusing of Trump, even if I hated Trump, and I was like, he's the biggest, I, I don't have fakeness in me. I don't have a button to just push off and be inauthentic and be com a complete dum-dum. has nothing to do with preference of political parties. It has to do with who has a brain, who has even an ounce of common sense and decency and who is so inundated in fake news and brainwashing that they think that anything against Trump is, is wrong. Then they said that the Russians were hacking Pokemon Go and the Russians are infiltrating Facebook. You remember that? That was the big bombshell three weeks ago. Don't you notice that there's no consistency even in this article? It tells you they're going to go from here to here to here and they're like, we, they can't fire us and we might not even find anything, but we're just going to keep going. They're, they're admitting that. It's not Breitbart. It's not Alex Jones. It's NBC. It's Washington Post. All you have to do is get past the headline and they'll admit to you. I don't even read right wing things. I read left wing things and I see how dumb they are and how fake they are. Then they said it was the Facebook ads in Pokemon Go. They investigated further and they found out the Facebook ads were not pro-Trump ads. They were pro-Hillary ads and black activist ads talking about Muslim women and social justice. And that's what they were doing on Pokemon Go, naming Pokemon after social justice, which has very little effect on anything political anyway. So that story is a lie to begin with. But that flips the script. So wait, they weren't even Trump ads like you made it sound like they were running trump ads like trump 2020 hillary they were running the same ads that washington post runs so how is russia colluding by doing exactly what the mainstream media does and what huffington post does and what vox does this is reality i mean you don't it's not a conspiracy theory all you have to do is read their article 
I, people think I do this crazy stuff. Like, oh my God, Anomaly doesn't even show proof. And he just make. I read the articles that they put out, the same ones that people share. I just read past the headline. I read what they're saying. And then I compare it to reality. And most of the time, it's, it's is a literal witch hunt. They're not even hiding it. Oh, well, Russia was uh, trying to destroy our democracy by talking about social justice. That What? How... How is talking about social justice dividing our democracy? And if it is, isn't that what you promote all the time? So are you admitting that you're trying to destroy our country? Like nothing makes sense. And then you notice, where are the Facebook ads? Where is the Pokemon Go articles? Where is the Donald Trump Jr. articles? Where is the Russia hack the election grid articles? Where is the Russia hack the election articles? Where is the Russia change the votes articles? They don't exist anymore because they were never real to begin with. They're on to this new one. Oh, we indicted Mana for it, and now you can't stop us because that would be crazy to stop us because we're just a bunch of madmen on a quest to basically do nothing. They even admit, I'll read it 10,000 times, Mueller's work may never reach the concept of Russian collusion, and even if it did, it's not a federal crime. Then what are you investigating? Like, we don't have enough crime in the world. Why don't you investigate where our weapons and arms deals are going? When we give tens of millions of dollars to, or billions of dollars rather, to Saudi Arabia, why don't you investigate where the billions of dollars of weapons are ending up? When we have a president who gives, you know, tens of billions of dollars of weapons defunds to Israel, and then gives a hundred million dollars to P Palestine right before he leaves office, why don't we investigate where that money went to? Because we gave billions of dollars to one country, and then hundreds of millions of dollars to another country fighting that country. Many reports in Syria say that our weapons are ending up in the hands of ISIS in Syria. And even Vice has done documentaries that show everybody's fighting with U.S. weapons. Why don't, why don't you investigate that? Why do we have a special counsel with an ex-FBI director who turned his head and didn't even look at all the crimes and corruption he's talking about now, prosecute somebody based on a five or six or seven year old crime when he was still in power? He could have done that seven years ago, but he didn't because all this stuff is not real. It's all a massive distraction to the major, major, major crimes that go by every single day. And the only thing that they have right now is the mainstream media, the fact that they own and control, basically now Facebook news is, is, is altered. Twitter news, they blame everything on right-wing activists. That's, at least have a balance. Uh, you know, YouTube, mo more importantly, uh, television, and the fact that people still believe it. They're overdrive, they're in overdrive right now, pushing this hate, this divisive article. Have a conversation, if you're a right-wing, whatever, conservative, uh, I don't even like to use titles, have a conversation with a liberal. If you're a liberal or a progressive or somebody that's extremely left, talk to somebody on the new right. Talk to somebody that is a conservative that you know is not just a raging, uh, you know, wild, whatever the media talks about. I can't even follow it anymore. Talk to people and you might realize at the basis of it, you want the same things. Everybody wants freedom. Everybody wants justice. Everybody wants to stop corruption. Everybody wants equality. We are not that different. The only thing that they have to divide us is the constant news and the constant blasting through our little screens on our phones and our computers that tell us how different we are, that tell us how crazy we are, that puts a microscope on the fringe people from the left, that puts a microscope on the fringe people from the right. So we continue to just fight on Twitter and Facebook all damn day. We were not born in this universe, on this planet, to fight on Twitter. If you would have told me 15 years ago my job was going to be to yell at people online, I would have been like, no, I'm supposed to be on a beach somewhere, be a firefighter, or, you know, be an entrepreneur. This is not what I'm supposed to be. We're not meant for this. Let's have conversations. Let's talk. Let's stop. Break the echo chamber and realize that we're all the same. Because if we do that, we might just find out this whole Mueller investigation probe is the single biggest piece of garbage propaganda perpetrated on the American people, right-leaning and left-leaning, to distract and divide from crimes of the last 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to with the JFK files, even 50 plus years ago, to distract us from what's really going on and to stop us from actually making progress. Nothing about this makes sense. Nothing about this indictment makes sense. Nothing about the Mueller probe makes sense. Nothing about the mainstream media makes sense. And nothing about the 
celebrity activist makes sense. Go stop your peers from being creepy sexual predators. Stop weighing in on politics based on the fake news conglomerates, the same television networks that you make millions of dollars from that hide and cover up all this crime and corruption that we're talking about now. Why don't you focus inward and worry about your creepy sexual predator friends. Stop weighing in on the fake news from the fake networks that you take fake checks from, that you've been taking checks from for the past 30, 40 years while ignoring sexual predator, uh, you know, uh, work environment. That's what you should be doing because your news is perpetuating all the division, all the hate, all the misinformation. And I want to see love, peace, and true equality for everybody. It's not going to come from this Mueller probe. Look into it yourself. Read the articles. Get past the headlines. This is wild stuff. Thank you so much for listening. To, um, I launched a clothing line recently, DreamRare.com. I have a shirt, Break the Echo Chamber, other stuff. If you want one, great. If you don't, it doesn't really matter to me. What's important is the message. Uh, I have a podcast coming out today. I, I met with Flecka from Flecka's Talks, and also I met with Vermin Supreme. I'm going to have people on. Let me know. Who I should have on. I want people on the extreme left. I want people on the right. I want people in the center. I want scientists, doctors, education, lifestyle, fitness. This podcast is breaking the echo chamber and I want to bring everybody together and prove that we're not all that different. Good people from all sides. Look out for my podcast today, Rare Talk. And also, if you'd like to donate to my news analysis, my potential news network and all this other stuff, uh, I'm going to put my donate link below. But more importantly, Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much for listening. And at bare minimum, like I always say, considering it's not about convincing people you're right. It's just about bringing people together, putting out real information and stop this ridiculous fighting that shouldn't even exist in the first place. Uh, I'm going to be out. I'll be back later today with some more stuff. Thank you.